All right, guys. So now let's move on to understanding constraints. What are constraints? Constraints are certain restrictions given on columns of a particular table. You wanted certain columns to be in some manner. You had to give some constraints to that. There are certain objectives of every constraint, right? So what are those objectives? What are different kind of constraints, right? And why are they used? What are their objectives? Let's try and understand that. Very important for us to understand because this is the start of creating a database in a table, right? So let me start with what are the various kinds of constraints. When you look at the constraints, constraints are of basically six types. One is not null. Then we have something called as primary key. Then we have something called as foreign key. Then we have check default and unique right so i think in primary key we have uh, already introduced ourselves to constrain a bit over here right but i think it's, it's time for us to understand the constraints deeply right let's take each and every constraint one by one let's start with not null let's start with the syntax over here and before we start with syntax we need to understand what not null does not null disallows the user to enter a null value in a particular column for example if you define this constraint and say that i do not want null values in this column i want some or the other kind of entry in this particular column for example employee id you cannot keep it as null right it defines the entire row isn't it so you know you cannot keep it null right so that is why you have to keep probably something like this not null and that is where this particular constraint helps us a lot syntax is very simple you create table give the table name and then once column name data type is given to us then you input the condition you input the column name you input the data type and then after that data type you input the constraint which is our not null constraint okay so let's see how this works in sql all right, fellas, let me start with something which is basic. Let me start by using the database DB. So I'll, I'm using this database DB, right? I'll create a table name I neuron. And in this table, I'll put in, let's say, course ID. And uh, I want this course ID to be integer. And I want this to be not null. Okay, so I'll I'll give this not null over here, right? And course size is integer, not null. And then I'll move on to, let's say, give another column name, course name. And let's say this is varchar. And let's say I want around 25, right? Is the, or let's say, keep a big number over here because course numbers might be high. So course name, varchar. Then we have author. And author is, again, your varchar. And let's say the author name might be around 40 characters. And then finally, I'll give another column and then wrap it up. Uh, something like uh, start date. Right, start date. And this is my date time. Okay, seems to be no error right now. And if I run this, I will actually end up creating a table. Right, so, oops, I knew it already exist. I have already created this. Have I? Okay, then in that case, just to show you guys, I'll just drop this table first. Drop table, my neuron. I'll just select this, right, run this, and it is done. And now I'll create another one, right? So I think now it's better. We can just remove this so that we can come back to normalcy, right? So now, as we can see, the I neuron table exists over here. And in this, I'll insert into i neuron and i'll start by values in fact in i neuron i'll insert it's always good to give this in bracket that course id course name and then we have uh, author right and that's it i'll let me keep it like this only okay and uh, in, in value, I'll just start inputting course ID, which is 202, then course name, which is, right, data underscore analytics. And the author name is, let's say, Saurabh, right? And if I just open this, close this, and now without running this query, if I run another query, select star from I neuron. Right, if I run this query, you can see that the table is there, but there's no entry here, right? So once I insert this particular value into my column, and now if I run this, we can see that this entry is there. If you look at not null, not null is given to us in case of course ID. Now I want to change my mind and let's say I go for something like, I'll, I'll reinsert something here. I'll just copy this code here. 
put it yeah here and this time i'm saying that i do not want to enter course id i just will start with course name right and the author name right so let's so i go for the course name as uh, full stack and let's say the author name is sunny right now if i insert this and run this one what do you think will happen here it is going to throw us an error and why is there an error because it says field id can you just see field course id doesn't have a default value and we have already assumed that course id over here right course id had to be given a value it cannot be nominal hence this insertion into the data will not be taken by sql over here and what you need to do over here is to actually give a course id and only then it will enter the value over here all right so this is how it goes so not null now it is inserted and now we can in fact we don't have to write it again we can just do this one select as you can see there are two courses entered into the table this is what not null does